I mean, it was a very comprehensive paper. It went through, um, you know, health span and lifespan and uh, across a number of different metrics. But so what do you see as the kind of the headline observation and findings in, in the paper that you wrote? So what we observed in during the course of the investigations is that taurine uh, levels decline with age. Mm -hmm. And all, not only taurine levels decline, there is a resistance of taurine metabolism at the tissue level as well. So uh, many tissues are known during aging process that taurine uh, levels decline. When we actually investigated the downstream products of taurine, they were also very low. In fact, they were much more dramatically down-regulated in the aged tissues compared to taurine uh, itself. So there are a variety of um, uh, processes that were going down uh, in uh, tissues and in blood. Now, this, this was happening in mouse, for example, around 14 to 15 months of age, which is uh, equivalent to 45 to 50 year old humans. And this uh, led us to investigate, can we supplement taurine um, and uh, led us to design a treatment strategy in the animal models by, by um, um, looking at a pilot studies and uh, formulating a, uh, an intervention. And what we noted is that if you now supplement animals with once daily with taurine for life, they were living longer, healthier for a variety of uh, health span matrices. And mouse was just a one model organism. We also investigated in worms. It was increasing worm lifespan and health span. We went to uh, monkey interventions. It was increasing the health of monkeys uh, after six months of supplementation. So what these studies are telling us is that taurine deficiency that happens during aging, a reversal of this deficiency increases health span and lifespan in worms and mice, health span in monkeys, and it is associated with a variety of uh, health parameters in aged humans, depending on how much taurine do they have. So you started the with middle-aged mice, right? You started giving the taurine 1,000 milligrams per kilogram uh, to middle-aged mice. So the reason you pick middle-aged mice is because that's that's when they start to lose taurine, right? Did did they you start any? Yeah, did you start any that were earlier, and did it make any difference? We did not, and that is uh, part of uh, a, and that is an important question. As I said in the beginning itself, we do not know when does the taurine levels mm -hmm. decline, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, what we are attempting to investigate in humans, we are directly not testing in humans, is that when does the taurine metabolism get compromised? Are the downstream products get compromised first of taurine before taurine levels are seen to decline or they go down together? And then we are going to do an intervention at different phases of life. For transient uh, intervention, for just for supplementing them for a few months and uh, seeing do they live longer and healthier when they are older. Mm -hmm. And these are questions, well, we are trying to get funding for it at the present time. And hopefully somebody will think these questions are important to give us uh, money to investigate uh, these questions. Yes. Yeah, hopefully. The results from the taurine were very similar to kind of early results from rapamycin. I mean, it seems to have the same kind of extension for middle-aged animals, at least for mice, which is uh, really quite amazing. Uh, given uh, Yes, it appears so. It appears so for now. Um, and um, that is why we were, ourselves were um, very excited and we had to go to different species at the same time uh, by collaborating with different individuals, a different scientist on board and the paper uh, to investigate in worms, what happens in, in yeast, what happens in monkeys, what happens in humans. When you have finding in, in one species, you need to extend them. And today, in today's world, in scientific um, collaborative atmosphere, we have a variety of resources, especially in countries like USA, you have these um, wonderful Nathan Salk centers, which have been established uh, across the country uh, in different major cities, which actually allow investigators like, like me, who have uh, 
well, no expertise in working in yeast uh, to uh, just uh, ask them to test your molecules. And uh, that is the that is one of the, uh, I think, advantages of being in in um, among these Nathan Sox Center of aging uh, around the country. So I did see that when you were testing the health span or, or actually some of the metrics of health, like the 500 milligram per kilogram group did not always do as well as like the 1000. So it, it seems to be like there was like a cutoff below which it, it was not working. I, so do you think it would be worth trying like more, uh, like more than a thousand milligrams per kilogram? So in, in 500 milligram per kg body weight, we saw an improvement in the most of the health matrices. Mm -hmm. Um, in the immune system, uh, 1000 milligram per kg body weight was more effective. Um, and uh, having said that, uh, we do not know at the present time uh, uh, what kind of doses would be best effective for particular organ functions. And uh, we selected these two doses for a variety of reasons in, in the beginning, uh, in the, when we did the pilot studies. Um, the first and foremost, we wanted to be as close to the human doses that are deemed safe to, for consumption. So the three, uh, sorry, 500 milligram per kg body weight is around three gram um, equivalent in humans and 1000 milligram is approximately equivalent to six gram. Mm -hmm. And according to European Food Safety Authority, up to six gram consumption uh, by a adult human per day is under the safe limit. So there were a variety of reasons we went for these doses. Uh, and uh, and it, it, it tells us, okay, there are in 500 uh, milligram, you see a uh, variety of health span matrices improving. Now, at the present time in the, in the aging field, we do not know which organ functions are more important and decline in which organ functions are really uh, contributing more importantly to the to the disease process during aging so we don't know those uh, involvement of organ, organ functions is it liver is it pancreas is it is is it brain functions that are uh, a major driver of aging so there there has to be uh, a few organ functions which play a more important role in the aging process uh, compared to others um, because of their metabolic nature and I, I think that is an important question, which a field in, in general has to go, has to investigate in more detail, uh, which organ functions are proximal uh, to the entire aging process. Some organ functions start declining early on, such as, for example, if you look at muscle functions, uh, bone functions, they decline much early on, as, um, I mean, as early as uh, uh, 40 years of age. And you have a start to see muscle compromise, bone functions getting compromised. Then and later on, you start getting these uh, brain functions get compromised. You have a memory defect, uh, anxiety problems, and, and those so on and so forth. So the proximity of the organ functions or organ health is not yet defined. Which organ functions are more important? Uh, and perhaps they are they are organ they are drivers of aging. Those organ functions are drivers of aging, and they are, these these questions need to be defined more precisely. Nobody can say that we measured these following organ functions and uh, health was improved. Health span matrices were improved because not every organ functions was investigated. And, and no study does it. No, it's not possible due to the experimental nature of it, as well as the expertise involved in bringing together a variety of uh, um, specialists to do so. So I think it's, it's, it's going to go forward in the, in the right direction and perhaps um, expand onto the proximity of uh, organ function decline across the aging spectrum to figure it out um, which organ functions uh, perhaps initiate the process. So you looked at a lot of the kind of biochemistry. You know, I, I saw, you know, looked at like mm -hmm. mitochondrial health. And other. So what do you think was the most important effect for the health span and the lifespan in terms of the, the kind of biochemical effect of taurine? So in we did not investigate entire spectrum of taurine effect in the cells. 
uh, we did a lot of things, but um, one thing which we noted is that taurine is actively imported into mitochondria. And there it is uh, modifying uh, covalently uh, the uh, transfer RNA required for mitochondrial translation of uh, complex one uh, protein ND6. And that uh, is a specific process because the transfer RNA that taurine modifies is required for a specific amino acid incorporation and that is enriched in this ND6 protein. And in the, in, in the deficiency of taurine, you have complex one deficiency. And that leads to increased oxidative stress. Uh, and taurine uh, on its own suppresses many of the um, consequences of oxidative stress, such as DNA damage, um, consequences of telomerase deficiency induced uh, DNA damages, oxidative DNA damage to be more precise and uh, regulates autophagy and all those processes. Uh, I, I think in my view, uh, there could be an important role played by, by, by taurine in mitochondria, which is contributing to um, the health effects that we see in the cells and then in the organs and then organism as a whole. Um, and we are currently investigating in more detail uh, what are the processes uh, which taurine uh, regulates in mitochondria and other organelles in uh, in the cells which uh, are contributing uh, to this process so i saw that it reduced uh senescent cells or or senescence actually it reduced well senescent cells i guess do you see, do you see it as a senolytic or is it suppressing the creation of the senescent cells in the first place um, I personally think it is doing both, um, oh. and it is uh, like a xenomorphic as well as in the um, later stage it can act as a synolytic, uh, because synolytic is a very, um, I would say, ambiguous term, um, mm -hmm. because uh, most of the mechanism of synolytics is not known. Uh, in the case of taurine, what we noted is that variety of different uh, processes that induce senescence in the cells, such as DNA damage, which induces senescence, uh, telomerase uh, deficiency that induces senescence, mitochondrial uh, dysfunction that induces senescence. So no hallmark, aging hallmark uh, acts in isolation. Mm -hmm. They are interacting with each other. So, uh, in my personal opinion, um, the to say that a particular hallmark is more important than the other, it will be wrong, because mm -hmm. a, a, a DNA damage will lead to senescence. Autophagy dysregulation will lead to senescence. Uh, proteostasis problem in the cells will lead to senescence. Mitochondrial dysfunction will lead to senescence. Uh, oxidative stress will lead to senescence. So, the all these hallmarks together constitute a, a process and we do not know how these are interacting with each other. You can suppress. The most remarkable finding in my view was that despite the fact that in a, in a telomerase deficiency, uh, these uh, we, we did in zebrafish and in a telomerase deficient fishes, uh, these fishes die within 10 days uh, mm -hmm. of fertilization. Uh, because they have very increased senescence uh, or zombie cells in them. Mm -hmm. And if you now supplement taurine, 40% of them die, these fishes. And if you supplement these telomerase deficient fishes with taurine, it suppresses senescent uh, cell accumulation and it rescues their lethality. So it is telling us that it can act downstream of variety of different uh, processes. Is it a master regulator or is it a mediator? Taurine as such, we don't know. Uh, it could be uh, a process which is cardinal to the cellular health, which it is driving. Uh, and that is why during evolution, it has been uh, accumulated in cells across organ systems and across uh, organisms uh, to do a job, which is an important job. Um, given that it is present in, in the highest amount in milligram quantities in the cell is like, it's very high. 
is, is in, in the retina, if you have taurine deficiency, you go blind. Uh, and if you have muscle in muscle, if you have taurine deficiency, you have muscle wasting, uh, cardiac problem. And that is how the, the, this is uh, playing a role, which, which has to be an important role. And one of the mechanisms we have proposed uh, that it is affecting variety of hallmarks. Um, mitochondrial health could be perhaps the proximal event uh, in this process. So do you see that as like taurine is impacting all these different areas or it's systemic? It's like just making the whole animal younger or I guess more healthy. Well, the, um, the health of an organism is dependent on cellular and organ health at the end. Hmm. Uh, because we say that our organism is healthier only when we measure a variety of organ functions. And those organ functions are a readout of uh, cellular functions. So at the end, it, any molecule that is working will act at the level of the cells. Mm -hmm. There, those cells functions get uh, affected, either improved or uh, decreased. Uh, such as, for example, in the case of the um, immune system uh, dysregulation that happens with age, there's an increase in inflammatory state that happens with age. Tony was suppressing it. Hmm. But on the other hand, it was increasing the uh, the cellular health by promoting uh, autophagy, by regulating proteostasis, nutrient sensing, the cells, the ability to sense nutrients. So it is the cells at the end, all boils down to the health of the cells. Because hmm. that will that will regulate the um, any circulating factors uh, that will regulate any um, uh, health parameters. So it is acting on, on cells. I, I, I would say cells, improving mm. vigor of the cells. Right. Taurine did also reduce inflammation. So you kind of mentioned that. Can you talk a little bit about what you saw in terms of its re reducing inflammation? Yeah, so, so what we noted is that in mice and in monkeys, uh, if you have taurine supplementation for a long time, once daily, you have reduction in the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that tend to accumulate with age. And that is a kind of a, a process known as inflammaging. Uh, so taurine was suppressing this pro-inflammatory state that is um, happening with age. Uh, and that it was doing so by shifting the uh, the ratio of uh, myeloid to lymphoid um, cells in the blood or generation of them. So the ratio of myeloid to lymphoid, uh, which gets dysregulated with age, leads to increase uh, the inflammatory cytokines and taurine was suppressing this myeloid to lymphoid ratio and inflammatory state with age and making it look like more younger immune system, which can mount a better immune response. Because our ability to mount immune response or clear uh, bacterial and viral infections compromises with age because of these immune system dysregulations. And taurine was improving this entire process. <music>